Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I think the title of this video will be, uh, There Really Are Zombies Walking Among Us. Now, there are some very popular uh, TV shows and movies that have come out over the last few years about zombies, the, the walking dead, the night of the living dead. And maybe you've seen these movies, and the, the idea is really very simple, that people who are actually dead are able to be reanimated, and they actually move around and, uh, as though they were alive. But they're really the walking dead. Well, uh, the interesting thing is this uh, fictional concept is actually a theological reality in our world. Let me explain from the beginning why this is so. Uh, scriptures tell us in, in the book of Genesis that uh, when God made man, he breathed into him his spirit. He, he, brought him, he made him a living soul uh, because the spirit of God was dwelling in man. And this was the, uh, what God intended for man. God intended for mankind, Adam and Eve and all of his uh, descendants, were intended to walk in the spirit with God, to have this relationship where they were existing and living with this actual spiritual connection to God. And, but Adam and Eve... Uh, they, they were deceived by Satan. And God told Adam and Eve that there was one tree in the garden that they must not eat from. It was the, the tree of the, the knowledge of good and evil. And God said that don't ever eat from that tree because if you do, in that day, you will surely die. Uh, God made it really very clear uh, it wasn't something that was, uh, you know, hard to understand. You will die the very day you eat from that tree. Now, the interesting thing is that the tree was named the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. At, at, uh, before Adam and Eve actually ate from the tree, they didn't have a knowledge of good and evil. They simply walked in the spirit in this loving relationship with their creator. Well, Satan approached them and told them that it's not true what God told you. If you eat from that tree, you will not die, but you will instead be like God. You'll have the knowledge of good and evil. So that appealed to Adam and Eve. Uh, they thought the idea of being like God and understanding good and evil, understanding right and wrong, uh, would be something desirable and that they could be like God and they could, they could, uh, there would maybe be no need for God because they could be like God themselves. So on that day, they actually committed the first sin and that was they believed Satan rather than believe in God. God said, don't eat from the tree or you'll die. Satan said, if you eat from that tree, you won't die. You won't die. You'll just be like God instead. So they had a choice. They could have continued to believe God. Instead, they believed Satan. That's the time that they actually uh, rebelled against God and declared their independence from God. They decided that they would become their own gods and that they would be like God with this knowledge of good and evil. So they ate from this tree, and immediately their eyes were opened. They knew good and evil, and they knew that they were naked, and they attempted to cover themselves up with fig leaves. Maybe fig leaves were the closest thing to them, because maybe it was a fig tree that they ate from. But regardless, they tried to uh, remedy the situation themselves by covering themselves with these fig leaves. 
course, God uh, understood what happens. And, and God knew that mankind could not remedy this problem that they created by covering themselves. So what God ended up doing was killing an animal and taking the animal's skin and covering Adam and Eve with it so they could have a proper covering. The reason the animal skin was proper is because in order to solve the problem that Adam and Eve created, it required death and blood. Uh, and something had to die, blood had to be shed, so that they could be properly covered. Well, that's a picture uh, of the future death and shedding of blood of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ. Now, so did Adam and Eve actually die the day that they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? They lived hundreds of years. I think it was eight or nine hundred years after that. They were walking around apparently alive, but they were the very first of these zombies, the walking dead. They they were walking around animated in bodies, but spiritually they died. The spiritual connection that they had to God was severed. God withdrew his Holy Spirit from them. It's like uh, being disconnected uh, from the, the, the source of, of life and, and love, which is God. So when God withdrew their spirit, Adam and Eve, they had a body and they had a, a soul and they had a spirit that was no longer connected to God, which was a dead spirit. So they were dead spiritually and they walked around for hundreds of years like zombies, uh, the walking dead spiritually. Now what happened to all their descendants is that uh, uh, we all inherited this condition that they had. It's, it's a, a birth defect that we have. It's a, it's a genetic uh, flaw. And that is that we are also born dead. We're born dead spiritually. And therefore, every person who's ever been born since Adam and Eve has been a zombie, walking dead spiritually. And they also uh, were mortals. Uh, they never had, they no longer had this uh, eternal life source from God, so they were doomed to die eventually. And Adam and Eve, it took about eight or nine hundred years and they died. And then uh, each person born after Adam and Eve is born dead spiritually, even though they're walking around and they are animated, they're, they, uh, they are dead spiritually and just waiting for their bodies to die too. And now it takes around 70 or 80 years for most people to, uh, for their bodies to follow in death as their spirits are dead to, too. So we're all zombies. We're all walking around in spiritually dead bodies. But I've got good news for you. The Bible says that, that uh, uh, God loves us so much that he doesn't desire that any of us should perish. The Bible says, in, in spite of our sinfulness, God loves us so much in spite of our sinfulness that Christ, Jesus Christ, would come and die for our sins. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So isn't that wonderful news that God knew that man could not provide his own covering. The fig leaves didn't work. And all of man's religions, all these centuries, these millennia, uh, man could not fix the problem. Man could not find a cure on his own. So God uh, provided Adam and Eve a covering. 
in the garden, and he provided all of us a covering about 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so now, there is no longer a barrier between man and God. Uh, this spiritual connection that was severed when God withdrew his spirit uh, because of sin, Jesus, since Jesus paid for all of our sins on that cross, now man is able to restore this spiritual connection. We're able to get regenerated, quickened, brought back to life spiritually. And this is, this is something that's available to every person. If you have never done this, then I'm going to tell you how to do it now. It's really very simple. Understand that you are dead spiritually and you need to be born again. Understand that uh, you cannot solve the problem on your own. There is no religion in the world that has the cure. There is no work that you can perform to provide the cure. But God loves you so much that he provided the cure. He provided the, the remedy to this horrible problem. And that is that eternal life is offered to everyone and we can restore this spiritual connection to God by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you right now to acknowledge that you are in a helpless situation. You cannot be brought back to life spiritually on your own, no matter how hard you try. You need Jesus Christ for this. Jesus said uh, that he came to give us life. He's offering you life right now, and God will restore this spiritual relationship. He will indwell you with his Holy Spirit again. And you can, from that point on, walk in the Spirit as God intended from the beginning and have the relationship with God the way God originally planned it, the way you were designed to have this spiritual connection to God. So, it's really very simple. No longer believe that you can fix this problem on your own. Instead, believe that Jesus Christ is the only solution. Put your faith in Jesus. He gives you eternal life. He puts the Holy Spirit in you and this spiritual connection is restored. And then you can walk around, not as a zombie, but as a saint, as a child of God, walking in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in you and with you forever and ever. It, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. I hope you do it. I hope you put your faith in Jesus completely. If you do, let me know. Please make a comment on this video. So uh, it is unfortunate that most of the world truly are zombies. Uh, they are walking dead spiritually. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.